I, like you, had no idea there was such a thing as wind delay, but it was windy as shit, and the discs were flying. Here's your day three recap. It's me, Swiss Cheese, with a Disc Golf World. I'd like to apologize for how raspy my voice is. Got a little too aggressive cheering with the rest of the eight holers, but we're going to power through this daily recap of all the action from the MVP Open on day three. Many didn't know what to expect coming out of the delay, but moves were to be made on its way to the final day. Simon came out hot, birdieing four of the first five holes, immediately closing the gap between him and Calvin Heimberg only to follow that up with three straight bogeys. Then prior to heading into the back half, Simon hit an 80-foot highlight putt for birdie closing out the front half two under. From there, he played clean the rest of the way, while also adding four birdies, finishing the round six down in the hot round of the day, looking to become back-to-back MVP Open winners for the event. Vinny did most of his scoring on the back half, looking to play smart in adverse conditions. Vinny was not nearly as aggressive on holes as he would be in better weather. However, when the wind let up, Vinny would score four birdies on the back half, finish the round four under, and a share with Simon for the lead. And I would love to go into the battle of these two, but we should count out the remainder of the card in Eagle McMahon and Ben Calloway. Both shot four under and are only a stroke off from the lead. Eagle started off slow and finished even for the front due to two bogeys, but was clean with four birdies on the back half. Ben saw himself over for the round and having a bogey three out of the four last holes, heading into hole seven needing to adjust. He then rattles off seven birdies with a single bogey, climbing himself back onto the final card with the top guns of the game. Ben will be slept on by many and he has grown accustomed to that. He is a sneaky good disc golfer, however, with plenty of pop in his arm. If he can stay above 90% in C1X and clean off the tee, he should be able to keep pace with this lead card. The talk will be the three-headed Hydra of disc golf's most popular players. With all three of these players near the top, I'm looking forward to each of them throwing their all and attacking this course. Each will need to push and recover as things will ultimately come off the track. And with the home course crowd easily skewing the numbers, Vinny and Eagle will have to accomplish it without fans backing. I told Jay after day one, I like where Eagle positioned himself far better than other four-day events where he had to play catch-up. And he has played this course layout very well throughout these last few days. So I'm kind of sticking with my eagle pick here. And him locking up an elite series win will quiet some of the critics. Vinny needs this win, showing the field that he can take down big events again. He hasn't won since Jonesboro, and his number one classification has been openly debated. A win over Eagle and Simon would certainly put an end to that debate. No one wants it more than Simon, however. He prides himself on winning back-to-back events. It's his home course. He's just released his Simon bag, time-lapse, and to further pump out our interview, it makes all the sense Simon tastes this victory, and will not hold back whatsoever. As the crowd behind him and all the familiarity of this course. Look for him to come out aggressive from the start. Should make for a fun final, however. However, the ladies' tournaments got just as close. I thought that the win would cause some more scoring differential, but in no way would I have ever expected it would shift in favor of Owen Scoggin. The scores shifted on the lead card as much as the win did, but it certainly set the stage for an exciting final in far more optimal conditions tomorrow. Owen came back from injury after having to drop out of the World Championship competition, and on the most adverse windy conditions to test that injury, she persevered. She bogeyed the first hole only to respond with a big birdie the next hole and while the rest of her card was painting their card red own was par streaking picking up stroke after stroke she would only have two more bogeys following the first one on one but would respond with six birdies the bulk coming from the back half finishing three down the best score of the day giving her a share of the lead She has her first elite series event under her belt now and looks to shock many by pulling out the win tomorrow Like Owen, Haley King started out bogey birdie through her first two holes and allowed Kristen Tatar to tie early, even taking the lead after three. Haley would then have an absolute disaster three-hole streak, starting on five, going six over with a triple and a double bogey. Fortunately for Haley, Tatar also faltered, and Haley was able to compose herself and on the back half was able to shoot two under and put in a four over for the day. She's tied for the lead and has been in similar positions all year. I believe all the ladies on the final Card have a good shot, but Haley might be one of the higher two. And the reason for it, I believe, in her scramble game and C1X putting. All these ladies are going to need to adjust to errant throws and bad kicks, and C1X putting stops the bleeding and capitalizing on birdies. 
Everyone uses roller coaster round a little too sparingly, including myself. However, that Tatar round was something else. Through five holes, she went three down, looked like she was going to cruise to a big lead as the remainder of the card nosedived, only to head into hole eight right after a bogey, to throw in the water, and then airball the drop zone putt for a double bogey, wiping her under front half and kicking off the back half that found no relief. She would throw another double bogey on hole 15, along with three more bogeys with a single birdie, going from leader to chasing on the final day after a four-over round. She's one stroke off the leader's Haley and own, and I'm not sure what to expect from Tatar. She throws well when conditions are good, and we just might have the best weather for the final. However, this course has also taken some chunks out of her, and when she does err on her throws, they are more costly than at other stops on tour. I might just eat my words here, but I don't believe Tatar will pull this one out. Evelina had the most difficult day of the ladies' lead card. Not Lisa Fake is bad, but not far off either. She would shoot five over on the front half with only one bogey, and even with two birdies on the back, a costly double would have her lose another stroke. And even with two birdies on the back, a costly double would have her lose another stroke on the final nine, resulting in a six over on the day, dropping her to a one under and two strokes off the leaders. Her putt was the worst we have seen all weekend, but still over 60%, mind you. I have the most confidence in her off the tee, more so than any other players on the leaderboard, but I would really love for her to have a better putting performance going into the final. She might hit the podium, but I don't think she can pull out the win. Well, guys, that wraps up day three of the MVP. Open. If you haven't already, go and check out all the content we're putting out. Always make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And if you're at Maple Hill, make sure you stop by and come say hello. I might have a sticker for you.